Motivation. <laughs> I'm motivated. But what do you do when motivation is not enough? You rely on your work ethic. You rely on your discipline. That's my talent. Now let's get it. The stage, please welcome Julian Peters. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? This is Julian with my Mentality Podcast. Excuse me. For those watching, welcome back to my face. For those listening, welcome back to my voice. I am here with Jimmy House. Uh, Jimmy, it's it's funny that your last name is House because you built like a brick house, number one. Um, I just met Jimmy at the gym in Arizona. For you all to know, I just moved out here. I see this dude, bench dumbbell bench pressing 150s, and I'm just like, Whoa. <laughs> uh, so I gave him a pound and it turns out he's an incredibly nice guy with a, an incredibly good uh, resume, so to speak. So how's it going? Good, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, I'm really glad we got to meet the other day. Yeah, man, it was great. It was great. So how long have you been in Arizona? I've been here my whole life, born and raised in Glendale, Arizona. Glendale, are you in Surprise Now area or you just worked so out there? I, uh, I like going there sometimes because I like the gym and then the 150s they have there versus the one in uh, Glendale that I go to, they only go up to 140s. Wow. So depending upon where I'm at in my program, I'll go out there sometimes. I like it. It's a 30 minute drive for me, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a gym in Scottsdale called Independence that I'll go to if I need like 160, 170s because I'm trying to build up to the 200s here, uh, hopefully in the next couple months. Jeez, geez. So is that like, you said your program. So what's your program right now? Like, how are you lifting? Uh, so I work with a guy by the name of Dawson Winham. He's based out of South Carolina. Uh, he's a very well-known powerlifter, like in the powerlifting scene. And he has a bunch of like very successful clients. I've known him for years and I've been following him for years just on Instagram. And then just this past year is when he kind of reached out to uh, offer to do coaching for me. And I took it as an opportunity to learn and grow to add on to what I've already accumulated thus far in my what has been about 20 years of weight training and I'm 25 years old. And uh, so he does my own customized program. The dumbbells, although he has them in there, is kind of my own thing. Cause I've always had this thing the past few years where like, I've been so close to doing the two hundreds. Like I have to, I have to do it. Like if I'm going to be able to uh, be able to walk away from lifting for the rest of my life, I need to do the two hundreds. I need a deadlift 800. I need to do X, Y, and Z before I, before I feel content with myself. So that's like one of those bucket list goals that I have. Got you. Got you. So how close are you to those goals? So uh, about a month ago, I hit the 190s for three, but the 190s were like makeshifts. So I took the 170s that Independence had in Scottsdale, and then I uh, I took two 10-pound plates, and then I put bands around it. And I, I did that for three, but I think if it was like a solidified dumbbell, I might have been able to do a little bit better because it was so awkward to hold and it was too, it was just too bulky. Um, so hopefully like I'm in that like five-ish range with 190s and my goal would be able to do the 200s, 200s for at least three, okay. if not five. So I just kind of pyramid up and down, kind of play with variations such as pause dumbbell presses or presses with my feet up. Um, starting lighter weight high volume and then getting towards the heavy stuff at the end which is why it's nice to have multiple gyms around that have the dumbbells that i need because it's kind of hard to come by as you probably know you know those dumbbells are really expensive i've talked to gym owners and the 200 dumbbells that i'm aiming for those ones cost like i believe like anywhere from four to six grand what depending upon what you're looking at and so for a gym to invest in that to have like only a handful of people <laughs> use them you know, they're hard to come by. So you have to travel if you want, like something like that. It's funny you say that because it's probably only a handful of people that can do 150s, to be right. honest. So, right. yeah, I, I get it. It's always good to look at. I think the highest I've gotten is 140s, but I repped it. That's really good. Um, That's really good. And I haven't went up since then. One thing I have noticed, and we'll lead this into the next question, um, as far as bench press, like with the barbell, I'm very strong. Um, and I can push pretty well. When you put me on the dumbbells, I definitely feel the difference in my ability to stabilize those dumbbells and push them up. I see. Is that a part of just consistently being able to train those? And what is your, like, why yeah. are you hitting dumbbells instead of barbell like most people? So I started with barbell when I was young, and then that's kind of how I got 
somewhat of a reputation at the beginning of high school, like being the only freshman to bench 300 or whatever. Uh, and then I started to find out when it got into like the bodybuilding or functional training side of things, I think dumbbells are just much more versatile and they're a lot safer because you can manipulate the range of motion. You can manipulate how your, your, your wrists are angled. And just so you're not in a fixated, you're not in a fixated range of motion that a barbell would give you. And so for a long time, I wasn't necessarily focused on powerlifting. Uh, I, I mainly was just focusing on hypertrophy, putting on size obviously strength too, but I think dumbbells are a better tool to use if you want the full spectrum of that. And so that's what I did pretty much. I want to say since my junior year of high school, maybe senior of high school until where I'm at now. So about like seven, eight years of consistently doing dumbbells like every single week. And barbell has only been relative to me if I have been in a powerlifting prep for a meet for an actual competition but when I'm outside of that, I don't necessarily get the, the, the excitement that dumbbells give me. I'm kind of the opposite of most people I find. And so because of that, the opposite of you, I find that I have a much better time stabilizing dumbbells. But then when it comes to the barbell, I don't, I don't press as much as some people would that don't do as much as me on dumbbells. So it's kind right. of the opposite. Right, right, right. So the hire, hiring the new coach is pushed me to incorporate more barbell movements to try to catch up my barbell strength to my dumbbell strength to hopefully get the two to complement each other. But I still feel like my dumbbells are way up here and my barbells like lagging. I noticed that the dumbbells has helped a lot would give me a lot of shoulder and tricep strength, specifically okay. how I press. I press a little bit closer to my sides. And uh, when it comes to the barbell, since you can't manipulate it again, you can't go from out here and bring them in because, because of your grip and the barbell stays my shoulder power translates like a little bit to the barbell, but I don't have that chest pop that I say, I think a lot of people do that uh, do a lot of barbell training. So that's coming along. Yeah. So what do you think about as far as, like you said, your focus was on dumbbells. So your barbell is a little bit behind. Do you think that's a strength situation or just like, I always tell people for my example, at, at one point, I say one point, I haven't really tried to go heavy, heavy like that, but about a year ago, I was able to incline bench 405 nice. and flat bench 405. And a lot of people were like, how in the hell <laughs> are you doing both? But it was because I was so focused on building my upper chest. Mm -hmm. I separated specific days to only do incline hard nice. as heck as I could. Yeah. And I felt like that's why they caught up. Do you think that's the situation there? Yeah. So dumbbell flat press and a barbell flat press are obviously similar they're a similar movement incorporating similar, similar ranges of motion. But in my opinion, uh, it's not a hundred percent transferable because at the end of, end of the day, they are their own separate movement mm. patterns. So it is easy for one to transfer to another, but inevitably to, in order to get really good at one specific movement, you have to consistently do that week after week, if not a higher frequency, multiple times a week, to see that type of improvement. And since I've introduced the barbell back into my training, I've definitely seen a lot of improvement with it. Like I said, just based on the years of consistency with the dumbbells, I'm still a little bit like one or two steps behind, but it's great to use the dumbbells to complement the barbell bench. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it transfers over vice versa, to be honest with you. I still think that do dumbbells 100 percent of the time and a barbell isn't necessarily necessary but if you want to get good at barbell press barbell press is important but also incorporating some dumbbells is good too but also understanding that they don't necessarily they're not 100 percent linear across the board with progression like if your dumbbells are going up that doesn't necessarily always mean your barbell press is progressing in the same fashion Right, right. And I, I obviously I know that because I, I'm on the opposite side of that. So what is your training regimen like right now? You don't have to give us full detail. I know you're paying a coach. I always tell people, don't ask me my diet. Don't ask me my training program. I pay for that. You can too. But can you give us, you know, maybe not what your coach is giving, but a way that you might have approached that prior? So right now I'm doing a four day lifting split. I was doing five more recently, but since my jujitsu has picked up a lot, I moved it back down to four and within that four days, I'm doing uh, two lower body days and two push days in there. And then within those days, I have back 
and different accessory work sprinkled in. So it's not necessarily like a like a bro split or like a push pull legs type of split. It's more so specifically powerlifting with all the powerlifting movements, variations within those movements, and then accessory movements to make sure that my body is holding up to maintain that level of strength to prevent injury and then also with the jujitsu and stuff like that it's i found that the four day a week split is probably my perfect like happy median because if i do too much i see a lot of progress with lifting but then i start to see myself take away time from jujitsu that i feel like i need to progress there um and i ideally prefer to not double up on jujitsu and lifting if i can i will if i have to but ideally as far as efficiency and performance more recently, I found that it's better just to keep the two separate. It de- and it also is dependent upon your goals. So I have very high goals with powerlifting, and I would like to see my strength be at a high level. So in order to do that, obviously, I need to be well-rested, well-fed, well-prepared for a heavy training session. And sometimes doing a hard jujitsu session before or after that, you see the effects if you try to juggle the two. So if I have to, I'll take one of my lighter lifting days like maybe my secondary push day and double it up on on a jujitsu day. But I found that my training and progression is the most consistent when I keep the two separated. Got you. So, and I know he just brought that in everybody, but Jimmy is actually a a, a real life Batman. He's a ninja. (laughs) Um, He's taking jujitsu. I actually creeped your Instagram, man. And you're what, like one stripe away, I guess, from being a black belt. Yeah, so basically how it works is each belt, white, blue, purple, brown, and then black, you have four degrees that go into that, and there's represented by stripes on a black bar on each belt, and so the max you can get on each belt is four degrees or four stripes, and then you're ready for the next belt after that, so essentially the next step in my journey, progression-wise, would be the black belt, yeah. Awesome, well, congrats on that, I know you're going to get it, that's freaking amazing, so um we can go back into the bodybuilding and the powerlifting part, but as far as this, the jujitsu, what is your plans for that? So I have very high goals when it comes to jujitsu too. Um, to be honest, I actually like jujitsu more than lifting in a lot of ways. If I were to pick one, because I get asked this question a lot. If I were to pick one to do for the rest of my life, I would pick jujitsu for one, because I like it more, but for two, realistically longevity is much better in jujitsu than it is with powerlifting. You know, yeah. like if you, dive into jujitsu, you'll see that, you know, people are actually still doing this into their sixties, some, you know, seventies and whatnot. And the longevity with it, once you learn how to actually do it is actually much better than powerlifting. You know, even though I've seen videos where like, you got like 70, 80 year old guys still going for like four Oh five, which is incredible, but obviously those are outliers and it's much more common to see that in jujitsu than it is with lifting. So those are the reasons why I picked jujitsu to answer your question. My goal really in jujitsu is to be one of the best in the world, like one of the top people to look after in the world and model model yourself out after if you're a jujitsu athlete. Um, I've taken up coaching the last two years full time, and I've really started to see what my purpose and and meaning it is in life and why I'm specifically meant to be in the world. And uh, I think part of me striving to help others is me accomplishing my own goals at a very high tier so that others are more inclined to want to learn from me. So I have, I have the ability to have an impact on others, you know? So selfishly, I need to accomplish my own goals so that I can strive to help hundreds and thousands of people at some point in the future. You know, I just set a goal this past month to hit a hundred private sessions in 30 days. And I was able to, to, to achieve that. And I've been seeing like my ability to have an impact on other people, whether it's teaching jujitsu, self-defense, or just basic weight training. And I, I really started to come like, this is like really what I'm good at. And I really enjoy seeing people progress because of the, the time that I'm spending with them, especially with kids, especially with kids. That's a talent of mine that I feel like I've come into the last couple of years. I used to think that I was terrible with kids. But now being around kids for a couple of years in the jujitsu gym, uh, TNT MMA training center in Phoenix, Arizona, just in case anybody anybody wants to check it out. I'll link uh, that. I'll link that in yeah. here afterwards too. <laughs> cool. I got awesome, you. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Being around the kids and being able to have an impact on kids' lives and actually see them for one, want to be there. A lot of times you have kids that are obviously there because their parents want them to. But as soon as you see that mental switch in their head to where they actually start to enjoy it and want to actually be there being the person that has 
the ability to control that to some extent is, is a huge honor for me. And it's something that I really want to do with the rest of my life. That, that is amazing. Um, congrats on finding your purpose. Cause I know a lot of people are looking. Um, I will say that I always tell people, um, I did training as well, but it was for basketball. I was a okay. basketball player. So I trained kids and it was the best feeling in the world to put a kid through a drill or tell a kid to do something and they do it right. Yeah. And like you said, you see the light bulb click. It yeah. is just yeah. like, I got excited as if I did it. So I get where you're coming from on that. It's the best yeah. feeling in the world, man. But um, with that being said, as far as the, the training um, and the working with kids and all those things, I agree with you in the fact that it's always easier. And we know this because we were kids to look at somebody that's done it and listen to them than the average guy that has no idea what he's talking about or you don't believe in. Yeah. So I do think I do like what you're saying as far as, yeah, it can make, maybe sound selfish, but there's a bigger purpose. There is for yeah. what you're doing. Like, that's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think that's, that's my number one confidence, confidence builder within my, my, general confidence for lack of a better term and knowing that I'm going to accomplish these goals because when I look at why or my purpose is for wanting to achieve so much of my individual success again we talk about wanting that to bleed and and benefit others that's really my main purpose I run my own I have my own business how strong and uh that's something that I actually work with with three of my best friends and so I actually told them personally I, I talked about this on another podcast recently where I personally want how strong to get so big to where they're a hundred percent benefiting for the monetary standpoint of it. And they're just, they're literally just making a living off of my hard work and my name and have them benefit from it. While I, while I still pursue my life outside of that, like I really want my brand, my work, my name, my reputation to benefit my best friends because you just met me, but my best friends have sacrificed so, so much to support me and, and make my own dreams possible and even, you know, their own like relationships or their own opinions from their own like parents and what they sh what they should be doing. And I see the sacrifice that people around me have put in just to see me succeed. And that's really why I know I need to achieve all of these individual goals, because it's going to directly bleed into all those that have shed love and support towards me in my journey to this point and further. That's awesome. So that that basically is what my mentality is. Um, that's cool the mind part stands for motivation is not enough. Um, and I tell people all the time, motivation is, it's just, it fades, you know, even when you, you've been in preps, you've been, you know, on those things. I don't want to wake up at, for, you know, six o'clock in the morning and go do cardio. Like I do not like, that's not something I'm motivated for, for 16, 18 weeks to do. Yeah, man. But yeah. when you're focused, like you said, on your goal, when you're focused on your purpose, when you're focused on the people around you that are supporting you, that's what you rely on. Then you rely on the discipline. Then you rely on the work ethic. That motivation is gone. Like I, yeah. <laughs> it, it's gone. So let me ask you this. Has there ever been a point where you've second guessed yourself in any of these goals? And how did you get out of that? Yeah, I think so. Because my goals are not conventional. I've, I've learned to accept that. And when I first started pursuing a lifestyle similar to the one that I'm in right now, I started to realize that a lot of people are not going to either understand it or agree with it or just straight up hate on it. And so there is a transition period to where I le had to learn to accept that a lot of people are, for one, not going to absolutely love what I do, and that's okay. And there's going to be a lot of people that don't necessarily agree with what I do, and a lot of those people are a lot closer than what you may realize. And so once you've come to terms with that and realize that everything in that realm of either doubt or hate or whatever you want to call it is going to happen it's inevitable then it's much easier to move forward and progress because you come to a point to where you truly don't care because anybody on the outside that's not supporting your journey to your best self isn't relevant and so i think i've done a good job of coming to terms with that within the last year i would say i've had a couple instances where I've had to test my own confidence in that and I've come out okay. And those instances have really shown me like, okay, if I can own my goals, if I can own my purpose to anybody, no matter how far or how close they are, then that's me truly knowing and owning what I need to do to be 
what I want to become and to be those for what I want to be for those around me. For so sure. that's like, that's the biggest thing to your question. Most that I would say as far as confidence goes, that's something that I have had to build back up myself, went through a tough time before I got out to Arizona oh, wow. um, and got a divorce, moved out here, new start, fresh start. Um, but like you said, confidence. And one of the things I was like, I was talking to someone about um, and their question basically was, well, what if something gets said or what if something, and I look, I thought about it and I'm like, if you can say something about me, Julian, that's completely untrue. And the person you're talking to believes it. They ain't in my circle. Yeah. So they're yeah. irrelevant. Like if mm -hmm. you, if you can tell somebody that Julian, I don't know, smoked crack yesterday and anybody that knows me knows that's not Julian, but that yeah. person's like, yeah, I, I can see that. We're not cool. Like you're not yeah. relevant. I don't care yeah. about you believing that. So mm -hmm. It's tough to get to that point of confidence, but it, it it definitely is beneficial, like you said, especially when you're trying to stick to a goal or stick to your purpose. Because I don't care what anybody say, family members, friends, girlfriends, whatever, people are gonna doubt you. That's yeah. life. Yeah. Get over it, man. That's life. <laughs> like, one hundred percent true. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's harsh, but I put it to this this way to somebody like if. if hey jimmy you there yeah can you okay hear me? yeah i can hear you now you good just buffered out a can little hear bit me? yeah i can hear you sorry yeah you good. Sorry. anyways what i was saying was i relate i relate this relate it to this one person one time this way and it's kind of harsh but somebody's talking shit, hating on your goals, hating on your purpose, hating on what you're doing just because they're insecure within their own, their own selves. Honestly, they're as good as dead to me. You know, they're, as you talk about irrelevant. So, I mean, they could exist or they could not, it's not necessarily going to affect my life because I really only try to keep people in my circle. And I think the term circle is used loosely nowadays, yeah. right? But within that inner circle of people that you really keep around on a daily basis to some extent, those are the people that you really have to make sure are hundred percent with you for the ride. And anybody within that circle that doesn't fuck with you like that, does it is irrelevant. Like they're dead. They yeah. don't need to be around because that type of vibe or mentality is only going to bring you or I down in our pursuit towards a better, better self. For sure. So my next question for you, man, and, and this is, again, this is a curveball, but um, success, right? Um, you tend to see a lot of people when it comes to reaching a level of success, get complacent, right? So you, let's say you wanted to win a powerlifting meet, you go and win that meet. And it's almost like, well, what's next? You kind of get a little bit lazy, might not be lifting as hard. You already did your names on the record books. So with a person yeah. like you who has goals, you know, have you ever dealt with hitting success and happen to figure out a way like to, continue to push or are you always looking to the next goal to be honest and you know we just met but anyone knows me watching the podcast I've always been the next goal mentality because to me one event is not necessarily the end goal it's just a step in the journey it's just one stop in the journey and the end goal is way, 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 way down the road. Like we're not even close to being done yet. I mean, in reality, we never are close to being done. And that's the mindset you really have to have, because if you have a end goal, or if you label something an end goal, then it will become exactly just that you'll get there. You'll feel great about it. And then where's exactly, as you said, where is the next step? Well, you, you just labeled that the end goal. So there was no plan to do after that. So even if I'm in a prep, you say for bodybuilding, and I'm, you know, 12, 16 weeks dieting super hard, only really focusing on the show. I still know that as soon as I get out of the show, I'm going straight into powerlifting, powerlifting pursuing the goals there, you know, putting my focus into jujitsu in some way, shape or form. Like it just never stops. And so I think I've just been blessed to have been born into um, a household that has instilled those type of uh, habits within me and then been around people, you know, from wrestling in high school to where I'm at now that have a very similar mindset. There is no end goal. There's just stops along the road and it only ever stops when you're dead. That's, that's my personal mindset with, with all of that. 
That's dope. And I would say those are traits that also make you a good leader. Because when you're coaching other people, and it's interesting that you said what you said, because me and my, I just had my bodybuilding coach on a couple days ago. I haven't posted it yet, but we did this as well. Um, And we were talking about that and his approach to somebody having two people at a show, one winning the show and the other one not. Right. And how do you deal with that? And his thought process is the same as yours, where it's always on to the next. And for me, that makes me feel more confident because I'm not focusing on the fact that I didn't just win. It's how do I improve to not feel this way again? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I think, like you said, when you're coaching, like you are in training, kids are, are tough, you know, mentally, they, they struggle, obviously we all do. But when you don't give them the opportunity to necessarily dwell on a negative situation, because yo, we got goals, like we still got stuff to do, or I'm glad you just won this tournament, but we got nationals in two weeks. Yeah. Like we can't celebrate. I think right. it prepares people. Yeah. Good point. Um, which that's interesting because I I've asked, been asked a few times about like, so what's your end goal with all this? And I, that's the one time where I actually feel stumped on a question because I, I don't really ever think about having an end goal. I just think this is just going to continue. I'm going to go from step to step to event, to event, to accomplishment, to accomplishment until I'm dead. And it's just, that's how it's going to be for the rest of my life. I don't, there, it really isn't an end goal for me. It's always going to progress in some way, shape or form. I'm never going to not be myself. So that's always where it's headed. Um, I'll relay it to you in jujitsu terms. A lot of times, you know, to the general public, a black belt is kind of like the highest that you can go in martial arts. Right. Right. But a lot of times in jujitsu, you hear people say uh, that, once you get your black belt, that's actually day one. That's where it out. That's where it actually all starts, you know, right. and, and that's a mindset implemented to help people realize that once you get your black belt, like it's not over, like you've only just begun, like now the real progress actually happens. And so even though I'm not a black belt, I can't speak from experience. I still implemented similar uh, strategies in order to get this far and hopefully strive for that level in the near future. Right. No, no, no. That makes total sense. Hold on. My computer is messing up right now give me one second there we go we're good to go cool all right so yeah i um it's amazing you say that because especially in bodybuilding which you know for those that don't know he actually competed in bodybuilding as well you're a natural pro correct yeah i got my pro card in uh uh, for the imba back october 2019 okay okay yeah Yeah, so That's awesome. So yeah, um, a lot of people, when you hear them, it's like, I want to go pro. I want to go pro. I want to go pro. And then they get to the pro card and it's just like, well, what's next? And you see the difference in end goal because a lot of people now are IFBB pros and we like never heard of them, never know who they are because that goal and the end goal was just get the pro card, not think about anything else. And I think part of that also is because they realize there's another level. You probably not going to be able to reach that level, which comes into the doubt. Me, I've been terrible towards preps, uh, but we're getting back on track. I do feel like I can get my pro card. And then my next goal is to win a pro show. Then my next goal is to get on Olympia stage. Then I want top 10. Like that is what I'm thinking. Um, And a lot of people will say you're crazy but I would argue that the craziest people are probably the most successful people in the world. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's crazy to the normal person. Yeah, right. What I always, always mention like being normal is okay. I just refuse to put myself in that. Right. You know, right. normalis normalcy has to happen for people to actually stick out. If everybody had that mindset, then that would become the new norm, you know? Right. So normal is okay. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, um, Back to your powerlifting, like, do you have any meets coming up? Are you doing anything for, for that? Or are you just. Yeah. So I'm about uh, three, three, I want to say about three ish months out from my powerlifting meet that I'm going to be doing right before a really big jujitsu competition. I'm trying to sprinkle in a strict curl competition in there as well. I, I compete in that too. Uh, okay. I guess you can consider that powerlifting. Yeah. Um, uh, so those are like the two next lifting things that I got coming up in the next few months. And then jujitsu is sprinkling in like about a month right after that. Okay. And so, and with jujitsu, cause you know, I'm, I'm obviously a beginner. Is there weight requirements? Like how does that work? 
Yeah, so typically divisions are separated by weight, belt level, um, and age for the most part. So like I said, white, blue, purple, brown, black, the higher you go, the typically the harder it gets. And then the weights typically maybe go like every 10 or 15 pounds for the most part until you get to the heavier weights. And then age groups, you got your like little kids and you got your teens, then you got like your adults. So like 18 to like 29, and then you got your master. It's kind of like, basically kind of like bodybuilding. You can compare it to or powerlifting. Okay. So. And what got you into jujitsu? Was it just kind of like, I'm going to do this. Is it a family thing? Like what got you into that? So it started from my wrestling from high school and wrestling for high school with me was a huge growth opportunity that I took advantage of. And basically long story short, I was one of the top ranked wrestlers going to state my senior year. I was actually ranked number one and wow, before, <laughs> six days before state, I got a concussion and I, I couldn't wrestle in state. So I had this huge goal of accomplishing a state championship in wrestling before I graduated six days before state, I got a concussion in the, uh, qualifying tournament. And then I never got to wrestle again. Yeah. Uh, I, at that point, so, so, okay. So I had, I guess I had that end goal of a state championship, right? So right. I all covered myself. And so after I learned that I wasn't going to win state, I was kind of just so burnt out or sick of wrestling that the thought of doing it in college made me want to puke. Like I just did not want any part of it. And so that's when I took the, took my next step into powerlifting. And I did that competitively for about two and a half years. And then in that process, I gained a lot of weight. I went from about like 195 very very lean to 270 in about two and a half years just 70 yeah just terrible diet not doing cardio anymore (laughs) because i wasn't doing wrestling and just uh just honestly just letting myself go and so then i started a diet to get myself back down because i just hated i hated how i looked i felt like i hit a low point in my life and then so after that i started trying to do wrestling again in hopes to use that as a way of cardio to lose weight. But in that process, I was invited to go to the jujitsu gym where I'm at now working. And once that, after I did my first practice, I, I kind of looked at it like, you know, this actually might be the next chapter, my next, like my next goal to conquer. Like this right. might be the next thing, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at it like, Oh, Oh, I just got invited to a class. I'll try it out. Like, I'm like, okay, this might actually be my next thing. Right. And that, and that thought in my head turned into a full on career at this point. Right. And then aspirations to where I legitimately truly believe I have a chance to be one of the best to do it all because I saw it as, as we talked about the next goal or the next, the next step in the process. Um, and so that's, that's basically how I started jujitsu was I was trying to lose weight from gaining so much weight, doing powerlifting, eating like shit. And then, um, from there, I started doing jujitsu full time and I fell in love with it and I ended up liking it even more than I loved wrestling. Really? Yeah. Do you use a lot of what you did in wrestling and jujitsu? Is there a lot of like, you know, balance and things that are kind of correspond to each other? Correct. So the overall body awareness that you gain from wrestling is definitely very transferable to jujitsu, which is why you see a lot of people in jujitsu or MMA excel that did wrestling. Um, It's just even more important that the person that has a wrestling background comes into jujitsu with a open mindset, because although wrestling is great to have a lot of times wrestlers, wrestlers will come into a jujitsu practice and just rely on their wrestling and not be very open-minded to advice from a jujitsu guy on how they could actually be better at jujitsu um, just based upon the different habits that they developed and what they've been taught, taught over the years. They feel like um, they're okay with what they know. They don't need to know anymore. And I've seen it, but then I've also seen where again, a high level wrestler comes into jujitsu room. I'm not even talking about myself, but a high level, high level wrestler comes into a jujitsu practice very open-minded, almost acting as if he's never wrestled before with the full intention of just learning the art and absor- absorbing knowledge just for the sake of adding a new skill. And then you complement the two together and then it becomes a really deadly force, something that's actually really scary to have to deal with. And that's something that I try to model myself after because I had a decent wrestling background and then I split it into jujitsu and I just kind of came in there with the mindset like, well, I'm done wrestling now. I had my chance. I had my concussion. So that's not going to happen again. So if I'm going to actually like take this seriously, I'm going to pretty much pretend like I never wrestled before. I'm going to be open-minded and take advice from anyone and whoever wants to give it to me. 
and let that mold me into where I'm at now about four and a half years later. Right. It's interesting you said that. That's the first thing that came to mind when you said wrestlers is uh, MMA. Most yeah. of the top guys in MMA have a wrestling background. I mean, you got a couple guys like the Izzy, you know, Adesanya, kickbox, but Kamara Usman, mopping yeah. through welterweights, wrestling yeah. background. John Jones, wrestling background. So, yeah, I that's why I asked. That That's what interest, interested me. So, you... We know your goal. We know your purpose. We know what you're doing. You're all over the place. Um, do you balance out anything as far as home life? Or are you just strictly, you know, jujitsu, jujitsu, powerlifting, getting to it? Yeah, I mean, basically what you see on my social media for the most part is what I do 100% of the time. You know, I have, I have, I have a great girlfriend. Um, I do jujitsu. I do powerlifting. I work on my business at home with my friends. Um, I'm about to finish my bachelor, bachelor's degree for school. Um, that's pretty much all I do. Um, you know, I'm either training jujitsu or teaching it. So, and going between that and then going straight to the gym, you know, like when you met me that one time, I just got finished teaching class. Okay. And it seems like, it seems like a hectic schedule or it seems like a schedule that doesn't allocate for much free time or fun time, but the thing is, when you do what you truly love, it's almost like you're having, you're hanging out, or you're having fun 100% of the day. It's like, I would be there if I wasn't getting paid. So getting paid for it is just icing on the cake. And so it, like, although sure, it can get tiring at times, because it's just a lot of physically demanding hours of teaching or training jujitsu and lifting. Um, I, I have my fun and training like together. And right. what's great is that all the people that I'm friends with that I like to be around all do the same thing. So I'm getting that social aspect as well. So there's really no lag lacking of any of that to me, at least like sure. Every once in a while, when my friends and I have free time, we'll go out to eat or whatever the case may be. But, you know, I, I found something that allows me to have all of those aspects of life that completes uh, like for mental health, in my opinion. And, um, and being able to knock out like two birds with one stone is better for time management. And it allows me to stay focused on my goals pretty much hundred percent of my time in some way, shape or form. Nice. Nice. So, and what are you getting your bachelor's in? Uh, it's a business administration degree. Business administration. Congrats on that. I got Thank my you. undergrad in marketing. Oh, very cool. That seems so long ago. My God. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, and then I got my master's in education which is why okay. when you talk about the training and coaching, I don't know if you've seen like the antennas in me, but I, 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 that's something I love a hundred percent. So, awesome. um, but yeah, so we get ready to wrap up, man. I don't want to keep you too much longer. I know you got a lift, but um, what if, let me ask you this. So what, as far as gym working, do you have any aspirations? I know you talk about the business, the house strong. Do you have any aspirations to possibly open up your own gym, your own, uh, jujitsu gym or anything like that? Yeah. So again, not going to use the term end goal, but I can use the term long-term goal. I right. think that something like that in the distant future would definitely be a great, great thing to have. I just think that presently it would be best if I accomplish all my individual goals first, like competing, competing at a high level, doing what I have to do to set up a resume that would want to bring people into that gym to further what I already have. And then at that point, let the gym be like my thing at that point and let myself just focus on, sure I could compete sometimes, but mostly just focus on the teaching and business side of things. But I still think I have a lot of good years left in me and I have a lot of things to accomplish before that time comes. So whatever that is, I wanna make sure that I have all of that like out of me, you know, before before I transfer that. I've, I've had advice from people that run gyms mm -hmm. and they typically say that the hardest thing to balance is trying to compete at a very high level, but then also running a gym. So obviously it's not impossible, but I think for myself personally, I would like to be able to focus more directly on one and then the other, uh, if I had it in an ideal situation, yeah. Got you, so got you, got you. So, and with the, I, I guess with the coaching um, and the training, are you only do jujitsu? You're not doing like personal training or anything like that? I do. I do do some uh, like weight training, fitness training and stuff like that. Um, so I work, I pretty much work with all ages. My youngest clients are five. My oldest client is, is in her seventies. Uh, 
So, um, and that ranges again from jujitsu, self-defense, wrestling. I have a few high school wrestling clients that I coach and, uh, you know, I just try to widen my skill range to appeal to more people. If anyone's listening and wanted, wants advice in the training realm, the more skills that you have, naturally, the more clientele that you can appeal to. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that's definitely played into my favor because instead of just focusing on fitness clients or just focusing on jujitsu clients, I've been able to take both skill sets that I've had and build a respectable clientele that's, that's earning me a living that, you know, I'm proud to say that, I, that I'm currently having. So, um, that's my best advice. So if you have like one skill set that you really feel like is your strongest, see if you can add another one and then become an expert in that. And, and then your income will really, really have a huge impact because now you have such a more broad audience to appeal to. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then for my last one, man, I like that too, by the way, for my Thank last you. one, uh, how strong, what is that? Give us the breakdown. You mentioned it, you showed the shirt. <laughs> Uh, I need one of those, by the way. Um, and yeah, let, uh, let, let us know what that's about. So presently, How Strong is my my business. We currently sell our apparel and merchandise online. It's www.teamhousestrong.com. Friends, we all just started. Uh, paused again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Pa can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good, brother. Yeah. Um, so it basically started back in 2016. My closest friends and I all just kind of like grouped together and just basically practiced powerlifting. And we we did competitions and stuff like that. And that's just kind of how it started. I was inspired by other people in the Valley that had a similar thing going. You know, they just made a logo, picked a name and just kind of made a team out of it. So I was like, I was 18 or I was 19. I was like, well, I kind of want to do the same thing for myself. And that's what it started as. And um it kind of started picking up some wind to where the shirts became something that were in relative high demand, at least in the Arizona fitness community. And I ran that for about three or four, about four years before I finally got to the point where we're like, okay, we actually might need to make this a business because I, I can't just keep a giving out shirts for free or B taking money under the table. Cause both are just <laughs> not necessarily a good situation. So, you know, I'm blessed that it got to the point to where it was such an, in such a high demand that making it a business was the next step. But to be honest, it just started as a group of um, teenagers at the time, just powerlifting, just because like we wanted to have something for ourselves. And, uh, you know, I've gone through my transition phases with it, you know, as I've gotten in and out of powerlifting, it's focused more on jujitsu or it's focused more on lifting. I've had you know, I had my fair share of rotation of people come in and out, but it's what's important is that my core group of friends has always stayed. And um, I've, I've been able to build a very solid core group of people that are extremely loyal to myself and the brand. And because of that is really the reason why I believe it, it's as successful as it is now or as well known as it is now. And in our first month of business, I would consider it to be very successful as well. So um, I appreciate you asking and then I appreciate any support anybody's willing to give with it because this is something that I'm not really doing for myself. I'm doing for my best friends. Got you. So uh, for everybody watching and listening, all those links will be in the description boxes. Uh, so you can go ahead and go to How Strong, get you some, nah, not some, get you about 30 t-shirts, put them out of business, put them out of stock, uh, get all the stuff that you can get there um, and and just keep supporting, man. Like I said, it was crazy because you break the mold of just about every bodybuilder ever known and every powerlifter. Because when I first met you, you were so open and so nice. And I think a lot of Thank people, you. you know, they'll see you squatting 700 pounds, deadlifting what you're doing and automatically assume I can't talk to this guy. And it wasn't the case. I mean, I think that's why success is headed your way because you are a good person. I can tell that just from talking to you, you, you know, respectful, the whole nine. So um, I just want to Thank say, I call it giving flowers, but I want to get your 25, correct? 24? Yes, sir. Uh, 25, yeah. 25, I mean, you're already doing way better than a lot of people at your age and the mindset that you have. Keep at that, man. I do think you're going to inspire some people and definitely some kids, like you said, to just be better, be great. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. And, and I had a very similar feeling walking away from our conversation about you too. I just felt like, well, for one, I think we had a lot of similarities, which is great, even in our music choice, which is yeah. actually cool. But uh, yeah, yeah, you radiate positivity. And uh, it's actually really good that you're here in Arizona because there should be more people like you around. So it's an honor to know you. 
I appreciate that, man. So uh, we're going to go ahead and end it now. We've been talking for a while. We'll talk your deck off. Uh, but this has been a blast. You got anything else you need to say, want to say? No, I just thank you so much again for having me on the show. I appreciate the opportunity, and I look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. Yeah, man, for sure. So, again, for those watching, thank you for watching. For those listening, thank you for listening to my voice and Jimmy's <laughs> voice. Um, again, all the links will be in the description box. If you want to check out the um, how strong as far as the apparel goes, order everything that you can. I'll put the gym down there. So if anybody who's in the Arizona area that might catch on to start listening to this, I know I'm new here. Go ahead and click that if you want to learn how to defend yourself uh, from the bullies, from whoever. They got you there. Show you how to do a chokehold, arm bar, triangle. Ch- I, I watch MMA, so I'm just using every word that I heard there. Um, <laughs> Um, But that'll be it. So, again, thank you guys for listening, and y'all have a great one.